everybody. So we're at the Science Spectrum back again, and we today are going to talk about candles that you can make at home. We're going to pepper in some safety rules in there too, but get ready because we're going to learn how to make candles out of old crayons. So we have a lot of old crayons here at the Science Spectrum, and there's plenty of colors to choose from, which means that we can choose any color for our candles. So here are the materials you're going to need in order to make your candles. So you're going to need a jar first and foremost. This jar actually has a pre-cut little wick in it. So the wick has this little metal piece and it has this um, long string coming out of it. And you can get them, I've got mine at Walmart, so you can get them like this. Um, they come really, really long so you can make really tall candles sometimes. So you need a jar, a wick, you'll need a hot glue gun because I, as you can see, this wick is having a fun time and partying on its own. So we wanna make sure it stays in that jar. And then we also need wax for our crayons. So I've actually got some extra pieces of wax that came from an old candle. So you can get some really long candles, break them up, and then take those little wicks out of them. And then you've got your very own wax chips. So you can buy them at the store as wax chips, or you can make your own wax chips. So we've got our wax for our crayons, and then we need what else? Oh, two things. We need scissors to cut our um, wicks the right length, and we need a lighter in order to start a fire. So we're actually gonna start off this with a candle. I put all of these colors in here to show off the science spectrum colors. I'm gonna cut my wick pretty low, but not too deep. And then we're gonna light it. We'll see how this rolls. Oh boy. So we'll move this off to the side and we'll show off all the melting colors by the end of the show. So what we've got here are some things that we can test flammability with. When we do things with fire, when we work with fire, we never play with fire, but when we work with fire, we need to make sure we have safety equipment. So we've got our first and foremost, most important thing, a fire extinguisher. So in order to use a fire extinguisher, we need to remember PASS. P-A-S-S. -S. P stands for pin. You pull the pin. A stands for aim. You aim the fire extinguisher at the base of the flame. So if there was a fire right here, I would aim it right there. And then I would squeeze. That's the first S. So when you squeeze it, you start to sway back and forth. That's the second S. So pass. Definitely remember pass. So we have that over here just in case. We've also got some heavy duty working gloves because that can protect you from flames. And these are from an electric company because electric companies need to be able to protect themselves from all that heat. And we've also got some things to put flames out. So with flames, you need to have oxygen in order for them to grow in flame. So I've got these to cut off circulation of air. So if I go like this on top of a flame, it'll go out. But what we can do is we can test that out. First thing we're gonna do is test out these materials. So, do we think paper is flammable? Let's test it out. I've actually got some crayon pieces right here. So these little crayon papers are gonna be our first test run. Y'all ready? I know. Okay, so this looks like it is flammable. When we say flammable, we want to make sure that we're talking about whether it can catch on fire or not. So looks like this one caught on fire. It wasn't too bad, but it did catch on fire. So in order to make that smoke stop a little bit more, that smoke's happening because of all that oxygen. So we want to close that off, make sure no more smoke can be created. But we'll move on to our second test. We've got a little piece of fabric. So we can pretend this is a pair of shorts or a shirt. Let's see if it catch on fire. Oh, oh. Interesting. That is so interesting. Normally, clothes will catch on fire. <laughs> so you can actually see a little piece where it was singed oh, just a tiny bit. So do you see that little black string right there? It actually did catch on fire. So you want to make sure if you have fire on your clothing, you stop drop and roll. You want to stop what you're doing, drop onto the ground and lay down, and then roll around on the ground so that you can try to put it out. So make sure that you're being safe whenever your clothes catch on fire. 
So now we can test out this. So we've got a tiny little candle and in there I actually have this tiny little wick. This little wick right here is flammable and we can test that out by doing this. I'm going to be very careful. Wait, 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 wait. You need to be way more safe than this. Okay. Got my heavy duty gloves on. <sighs> got my wick in hand. I've got my lighter. Okay, so this can catch on fire. This is flammable. Our wicks are flammable. We're going to put it in the same little tub as our mini candle, and we'll see what happens with it. Okay, so that wick is catching on fire, but for some reason, the wick on the floor is not. There's something in between the two that's stopping them from connecting. So, what we've got here is wax. Our wax is not flammable. So what the cool thing about wicks is, they are actually fabric, or sometimes paper and sometimes wood. Wood is also flammable. But they have a nice thin layering of wax all around each of the wicks. So with this wick, it actually burns a lot slower since it's covered in wax on the outside, but it creates a fire in between all of that fabric. And then what happens is it melts the wax, so it keeps melting and melting and melting that wax. And when that wax is moving out of the way, that flame is able to get bigger and brighter because its stem is a lot longer. That wick it gets longer and longer as it goes. So if you ever blow out your candle, you always want to be sure that you put your hand behind it, not your hand on it, and blow. That way, in case the flame is really big, it can't blow onto something else. That would be very, very dangerous if it blew onto something else. But if this were a super long wick, we also want to make sure we cut it nice and short. So right now it's still pretty short. We don't need to really cut it any shorter than that. But we do need to make sure that it doesn't get very long because the longer that wick is, the longer the flame can get. And that means it could be a really big flame. We don't want that. So we've got, oh, we can make a candle together. Are you ready? So we'll need that hot glue gun in order to put that little piece of wick down. So I've got an old jar from an old candle and then my little wick. Put a little bit of hot glue on there. Be careful, it's called hot glue for a reason because it's really painful if you get it on your skin. Okay, so we'll let that sit for just a little bit because it needs to dry. But now we have our wick standing straight up. And then we'll need our wax chips. And so I wanna make sure that I'm gonna be as safe as possible. This glass, I know for sure, is microwave safe. And the way I can know is that it says microwave safe on the bottom. Anytime you're not sure if something can go in the microwave, definitely either ask an adult or look, well, ask an adult and look for that microwave safe label because that would be very dangerous if it wasn't microwave safe. Some things can burn with glass. It can get really hot and sometimes it can get too hot. So we want to make sure it's nice and safe. Safe as we possibly can when we're working with butter. Okay, so I've got some of my wax chips. We want to burn these, we're going to put them in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time. So whenever I go over to our microwave, I'll type in 30 seconds. Okay, and so we'll check it in 30 seconds just to make sure it's nice and melted. But in the meantime, if I could ask Miss Megan, my camera reporter, what kind of colors we should have in our uh, yellow. Yellow. Okay. So we've got a couple yellow pieces right here. We'll put them... Miss Anastasia's also back there. Could you pick another color for us? Blue. Blue! Okay. Yellow and blue. And we've got some blue. I'm going to make sure that's not too hot with my glue. melting just a little bit, but not enough to where we could just pour it out. That'd be silly if we tried to pour this out. So we'll put it in for another 30 seconds and let it keep 
No. Ooh, we can check this out. So, with our candle, it looks kind of funny on the inside. Right now, it's just burning straight through. So that means that it didn't have enough candles going right next to the wick. That wax is what stops that wick from getting lit. And so since we didn't have a ton of wax surrounding that wick, it's just gonna keep lighting that wick all the way down. So it created a cool hole. So there's probably gonna be a pool of rainbow at the bottom. Let's check it again. more liquidy if we look at the bottom you see there's a little bit of liquid underneath so I'll put it in another 30 seconds the reason we have so many breaks in between is because that Pyrex that glass bowl could get pretty hot so I want to make sure that I'm still able to hold on to it but I also want to make sure that the wax isn't burning so it's kind of weird wax can burn if it has little elements of plastic in it or if you leave it in a hot place for too long. So we want to make sure that we're not burning any of our wax or if we uh, need to change anything in what we're doing. Just to make sure we're being totally safe. Let's check it again. Ooh, it's getting more and more liquidy. Let's check it just to make sure. Whoa. It almost looks like water, but definitely do not drink it. Wax is super not good for you to eat. Okay, another 30 seconds. No. Okay. So let's see. I have one more test to show you guys. So I'm going to clear out one of my bowls. So both of my bowls. So we got one empty Pyrex bowl. You can just pick these guys out. You can chill over here, quite literally. Okay, so we've got two lovely bowls, one of which is a little messy on the inside, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test something out. You can choose to put essential oils in your candle if you want it to smell like a certain scent. If you want that scent to be really, really strong, you can put more in it, but you have to be very careful because we're gonna do a test with flammability with these cotton balls. So on one cotton ball, I'm gonna put nothing on it. And on our second cotton ball, I'm going to put a little bit of lemon essential oils. So let's put just like one. We'll put two drops on it. Let's see. So what we're going to do is we're going to test the flammability of this one cotton ball that has nothing on it first. Ooh, a pretty big flame. Kind of spooky looking. Hmm, interesting. Okay, we've got that one lit. So I'll go ahead and close this one out. Let's start this one up. Whoa, that is a bigger flame. Notice that there is nothing different about what I did other than putting a little bit of essential oils on our cotton ball. So it looks like it's getting pretty big. So I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't get any more oxygen. We can watch it go out. So right now there's a ton of fun smoke going all over the place. And that's just because we've got our flames going out. Whenever our flame goes out and wants to go out, it creates more smoke. Okay, so you get ready. It's gonna be very smelly. Whoa, ew, smoky smell. But the cool thing is, this one with the smoke, um, from the lemon one actually smells a little bit like lemon. So that's pretty fun. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. So we're going to microwave that for just a little bit longer. Just let it sit. The nice thing is if you let it microwave for 30 seconds, then you leave it sitting for just a little bit, it'll still have that heat and it'll continue to melt that wax. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually use this. I want to make sure I'm not touching any of these. These two had fire on them just a moment ago, so they're still pretty hot. I'll let them cool down a little bit. But I want you guys to see this because all those white chunks are still melting just a little bit. So what I want to do is pick our colors. We've got our yellow and blue. I've actually got a few more colors. 
So I'm actually going to add green because I really like green. So we've got our blue, we've got our green. We're going to put a little more blue in there. Whoa. Okay. So now we've got our little friend over here. Oops. Let's get these out of the way so nobody gets burned. Okay. So now I have an open place. I have a covering on my table just to make sure if I spill any wax. So I'm going to put a few of my blue in there. And then a few of my green in there. I'm going to break this one in half. That's the nice thing too. If you have broken crayons, they're really hard to draw with. And so you always want to find something else you can do with them. It's really fun when you can think of different ways to use common household objects. Okay, let's get a few more yellow in there. The fun thing is, you know how whenever you draw with a crayon and it comes out a different color for no reason whatsoever? The cool thing is, you don't have to worry about that with your crayon colors on your candle because these colors are exactly how they're going to show up. Okay, we're going to try to pour a little bit. Did I spill any? I didn't spill any. Okay. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to throw this one back in the microwave just to microwave it a little bit more. turning into a solid again, it's turning white. So that's the crazy thing about wax. Whenever you melt it and get it really, really hot, it does melt and turns into a liquid. It doesn't need to have a, its shape holding, um, held by itself. So with these crayons, they're solid. If I put heat to it, it would turn into a liquid and just go and puddle into my hand. But if it has, if it cools off again, then it would pool into my hand and harden in the way that it was cooled. So that's exactly what we're seeing with this white wax. Okay, let's grab our white wax again. Okay, let's check it out. That's looking pretty liquidy. Yeah, I'll put this in. Ready? Hi! Oh no! I goofed. Should be okay though. And that is why we wear gloves for protection. I do use a lot of sound effects, so if you want to make your candle, feel free to use as many sound effects as possible. I like to mimic microwaves, so if I ever make a beeping sound, that means I'm copying the microwave. Not because I'm a robot, I promise. Okay, that looks like it's good. Can you find it? And since it's sitting in the microwave for a little bit longer, Same mistake, I promise. Whoa, awesome. Okay. What I'm actually gonna do put a little in here. <laughs> so while I'm melting these, I can actually start. melting that white wax, that's when I can start adding a little bit of that scent. So if you saw with the difference between the regular cotton ball and the cotton ball with oil on it, the one with oil had a brighter flame and was a lot stronger. If you mix that stuff with wax, that 
essential oil, the lemony stuff with the wax, it won't burn as suddenly. It'll be kind of mixed in and so it won't burn on its own. So you want to make sure whenever you're making these candles, if you do use essential oils, mix it in with your white wax because that is what will bring out that scent. Thinkable. I'm gonna let it microwave for 45 seconds. <sighs> That's the tough thing with big protective gloves. You're protected, but your dexterity, your ability to move your fingers really well, kind of goes down. But that's okay. At least we're safe. Because that felt really hot even while I was wearing. Make sure you're always wearing gloves when you're working with this stuff. <clears throat> We're gonna make it go back to blue. I wanna make sure we have enough wax. So the cool thing about testing this out is if you try really hard and it doesn't work out how you planned it, you can just try again. So this didn't plan out, didn't pan out just how I planned it. It turned into a nice little hole. You can zoom into that. So there's a little bit of melted wax down there. It's pretty fun. But what I want to make sure is that it kind of melts all together. So I'm going to put one more green piece. Three more green pieces. And, and, and. So I'm learning from my mistake because I want to make sure there's enough wax around that wick so it all burns evenly instead of just burning. All right, let's test out what happened with that 45 second microwave. Oh, good man. Oh man, look at all that liquidy. Hi -yo. Oops. Hi -yo. Yeah, that's feeling pretty hot. Oh boy. Oops. Oh boy. I'm gonna leave those right there because I can't pick them up. And I don't wanna make, I wanna make sure I'm not touching them with my bare fingers. But what we can do now is we can take my scissors. That's my lovely scissors. Cut just above where all that wax is starting. So there's a lot of wax surrounding it right now. So let's see if that slows it down. We won't show the whole process of this candle melting all on its own because that's going to take forever. But we will post a picture of kind of what it looks like once it starts to all melt together. Hopefully it'll look a little different. I might even try, if this works, I might even try to do the same thing with my rainbow one because that seems like what the issue was. But I have plenty of white wax to test it out. Oh, oh it looks okay. Well, we'll definitely post a picture of this end process, but I want to thank you guys so much for joining us on this do-it-yourself candle project, and I hope you've learned a lot about flames and that you need to be very, very safe with it. Thanks again!